Hey everybody, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. We are ready for another edition of our Deep Cuts from Classic Album series. Today we're going to look at the 1984 release from Whitesnake, Slide It In. There we go, the iconic cover image. Lady, snake around the neck, deep diving into the cleavage. You know, Whitesnake were famous for having these like very sexual in nature uh, album covers as well as lyrical content. So of course this album would be no different. So a big hit for the band. This was probably at least in North America, they were, this was their first really big album, which then would it would be dwarfed completely in a couple of years with the 1987 album, but that's a story for another day. Here, this was their first, uh, first strong, strong seller in North America. Of course, their previous uh, five or six albums had done very, very well. Uh, actually, four or five albums, I should say, uh, have th had done very well uh, in uh, in Europe as well as Japan. Because of course, you got David Coverdale on lead vocals coming over from Deep Purple. He broke up after the Come Taste the Band album. He did a couple solo albums and then decided to form the band White Snake. Uh, so it was kind of like a slow build for them. Kind mainly a, a blues rock band. A little bit bluesier, obviously, than Deep Purple. Kind of a similar formula, though. But they would kind of take that to new heights with the Slide It In album, which spawned a number of strong FM staples, as well as concert classics that the band still play to this day. So we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into the album. So a little bit of history, though, first. So the lineup of the band actually was a little bit different for the European release of Slide In It, which came out a few months before it debuted here in the uh, in the U.S., so originally it was uh, David Coverdale on vocals, obviously, John Lord, his old buddy in uh, Deep Purple on keyboards, Mel Galley, who was the new guy at the time, he was on guitar and backing vocals. Of course, uh, Mel, famous for being one of the driving forces in Trapeze, a great choice for the band. Uh, Colin Hodgkinson on bass, and none other than the legendary Cozy Powell on drums. Of course, Cozy X of Rainbow and Jeff Beck Group, and you would appear in Michael Schenker Group, and Black Sabbath, and Ingve Malmsteen. You know, uh, Cozy has ha had a wonderful career. May he rest in peace. Well, shortly thereafter, the release in the UK, uh, there was a you know an incident where. Coverdale had met guitarist John Sykes, ex of Thin Lizzy, and they were kind of chatting after a White Snake gig, and apparently uh, Coverdale was a little unhappy with the performance of Mickey Moody at that particular on that particular evening, and he kind of berated him in front of Sykes, and as legend has it, uh, Mickey Moody basically said, screw you, I'm out of here, and Mickey was already having issues with the band. I think he saw the direction of the band changing, and he just wanted to be a blues guy, so he said, all right, I quit. Uh, Coverdale then convinced Sykes to join up and announced he was the new guitar player. At the same time, he was a little bit unhappy with Hodgkinson on bass, so he brought back Neil Murray to the band on bass. So we basically had Coverdale, Lord, Galley, Sykes, Murray, and Powell. Uh, Martin Birch had produced the album, the uh, UK version of the album. They actually then went took, took all the, the tapes, the recordings, back into the studio. Uh, Keith Olsen was brought in to remix the album uh, a bit for the US release. They, what they did was they took out Mickey Moody's parts, added Sykes in. So even though most of the solos were Mel Galley's, uh, Sykes threw in like all these little pinch harmonics and little fills and things like that, as well as beefed up the rhythm guitar a little bit, and Murray's bass was then put in over. So basically, a pretty different album, a different running list too. If you go, if you go onto YouTube or maybe you have a copy of the old uh, U.S. album, I mean the U.K. album, you'll see that the the track listing is completely different than the U.S. Um, it's funny because whenever I've gone on to go listen to the UK version of this album, I'm so used to the running order for the US version, it's kind of strange to hear it all out of order. But anyway, we're going to talk about the uh, the US running order for this one. So, kicks it off with Slide It In, a great, crisp, catchy, white snake hard rocker. Again, a very popular song by the band, a great hook. Uh, the chorus is awesome, really tasty guitar work. Coverdale probably arguable, but I think Slide It In probably is one of Coverdale's top three vocal performances, I'm talking album here, uh, of his entire career. So, you know, for me, the Burn album is masterful for him. Slide It In is great. The 87 album is great. I think those three, and you know, you could obviously throw in Stormbringer, Come Taste the Band, or um, you know, Saints and Sinners. I mean, really, any of those, any of those albums from Burn through 87 is probably Coverdale's, you know, 
peak. Uh, but I think for me, the Slide It In album is just a great vocal performance for him, and he, and he shines on the title track. Uh, Slow and Easy it was the, the big hit from this one. Again, not so much a hit single hit, but uh, became a, a FM radio staple for a number of years. And I remember the first time I heard that on uh, the local rock station here in the Hudson Valley, New York, I was like, I knew it was Coverdale, and I was like, holy cow, uh, because... White Snake didn't really have a lot of notoriety here in the U.S. prior to this release, so I'd always, you know, I had always heard a lot about them, but uh, most of their albums were only available as imports, and they just were not really weren't making any waves here until this. Slow and Easy totally overtook the uh, hard rock and metal fans here, and with its kind of like dark Zeppelin-y, bluesy vibe, and it just was, you know, from there uh, there was no denying the band. So that was another pretty, you know. Pretty good hit for the band, but the I think the real song that really grabbed a lot of uh, people was uh, Love Ain't No Stranger. Just a really good, melodic, emotional rocker that, again, the band still plays to this day. And uh, just a ferocious lead vocal from Coverdale. Some really great guitar work from, from Mel Galley, who... You know, as, as history would show, his time in the band was very, very short. Uh, you know, he had a, had an accident with his hand and he could no, you know, he couldn't, I think they started the tour, he could no longer finish it. And then he eventually was fired from the band because his, uh, his rehabilitation time just took way too long and they couldn't, you know, band couldn't wait for him. Uh, real shame because what a talented guy. I love his stuff in trapeze. But anyway, let's move on. So All or Nothing, great tune with a killer guitar riff. And just a snarling vocal from Coverdale, um, which leads into the Gambler, which could be my favorite track on this album. It's bluesy. It's kind of smoky and mysterious. It's got a great riff, cool, understated keyboards from Lord, a rip roaring uh, guitar solo from Pretty Sure It's Galley, and uh, just. I love the organ where it's just a great, great song. It's bluesy. It's kind of purplish, but it's all white snake. Really love it. Uh, Guilty of Love is a just kind of like upbeat, hum along, sing along anthem, uh, which quite frankly, most of these I think are anyway. But Guilty of Love, very, very irresistible melody on there. Lots of hooks. Hungry for Love, beefy rocker. Again, bluesy. Every song in this album has that kind of bluesy rock undertone that the early White Snake stuff had so much of, but you could start to hear the little metallic nature of the band coming out. Cozy certainly helped, you know, going back to Slow and Easy. I mean, his thunderous drums in that song, I think is what really drove it, kind of gave it that like Zeppelin slash Bonham vibe. But, uh, you know, you could really hear the influence of Cozy Powell uh, on these songs, obviously. Uh, Give Me More Time, another kind of really melodic tune that had plenty of pop hooks as well, but it was ballsy, it was bluesy, it was heavy. Uh, Spit It Out is probably the kind of real like metal, I well, shouldn't even call it metal, but the much more metallic tune on this album. Uh, and if you listen to the UK ver- the original version and the US version, it's amazing how much John Sykes did for the Spit It Out song. The, the UK version is kind of tame for the most part, the U.S. version has Sykes like popping in with all these crazy little fills and pinch harmonics and stuff, adding that kind of like, you know, that uh, that U.S. hard rock and metal sound that I think Coverdale was kind of moving towards. So a really, really good song. Anthemic, fist pumping, play your air guitar type of thing. And then Standing in the Shadow, which is, you know, too many people standing in the shadow of love. And it's just, it's dark. It's rocking. Still bluesy, though. Great vocal. Uh, It's just so catchy. I think top to bottom, all these songs are just so memorable. And I'm not just saying it because I've been listening to and loving this album since 1984, because I have. Uh, And, you know, you get to a point sometimes with classic albums like these where you know every song so well. But the great thing about this is, you know, other than, let's say, those first three albums, those first three songs, Slide In and Slow and Easy, Love Ain't No Stranger, which if you're, you know, a semi- casual fan of the band you've probably heard you remember them from the radio if you've seen them live they play it play them live they were both all three were on the greatest hits uh, sets that have been released but i think it's the rest of the album 
specifically like, you know, gambler, hungry for love, give me more time, spit it out, stand in the shadow, eh, all or nothing. I mean, they're all great, right? I mean, all or nothing. Geez, what a driving rocker that is. So an album ripe and chock full of deep cuts that are just as spectacular as the more known songs. This is like a perfect selection for a show like this because it's not... It's not one of those, yeah, a couple great tunes, and that's why everybody knows the Slide It In album. It's not at all. This is a really, really strong, strong album, top to bottom, that, you know, some people, myself included, probably have a little more close relationship with the 87 album just because of its enormous impact. And that is a Sykes album, okay? If you're a John Sykes fan, that is, he, him, and, it's, him and Coverdale, that's what that whole album is about. And it doesn't get much better than that. But I think this set the stage for that. And this, in a different way, is just as strong and just as memorable, top to bottom. And, you know, there's no uh, there's no sappy ballad on this one, really. So for some of you, that, that's probably a good thing. So anyway, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on the Mighty YouTube as often as possible. we got some more of these deep cuts on uh, classic albums coming up. Uh, i got one uh, coming for from The Who. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.